you have, of course, the South Korean and North Korean nations trying to come to some kind of reconciliation in some degree. What do you think North Korea, what do you think South Korea, aside from the very obvious threat of war, which looms over the region, um, what other motivations, underlying motivations might be there to come to some kind of agreement or reconciliation? And, and in your opinion, of course, what would a reconciliation between these two nations look like? What would it, what would an unfolding of that and into the future, what would that look like? Yeah. Well, I, I think the, the major concern, of course, is the prospect of war, um, not necessarily coming from the outside, but war between the two Koreas. I mean, we still have, you know, two enormous armies faced off against one another, artillery positions on either side of the DMZ, um, and the, the potential of just a catastrophic loss of life in the case of any kind of conflict on the Korean Peninsula. So I think that's the number one concern. Mm -hmm. Number two, in terms of underlying motivations for inter-Korean reconciliation, um, there is an economic issue for both sides. North Korea has essentially embraced the market, uh, a kind of state-led, <coughs> excuse me, a kind of state-led capitalism, mm -hmm. um, but it needs capital. And one source of capital, of course, is going to be South Korea, as well as the Korean diaspora more generally around the world. Um, and uh, also information uh, transfer, te technology transfer, um, in order for North Korea to uh, come out as anything but a kind of subordinate economic player in the global economy, it's going to need uh, an, an infusion of new technology um, and uh, new kind of forms of uh, economic organization in the country. And again, the logical place to get that is from South Korea. But it's not just one-sided. In other words, South Korea can get something out of this as well. Uh, South Korean labor is pretty high priced. It's hard for small, especially small and medium enterprises to compete with uh, their counterparts in China, Vietnam, and elsewhere. Uh, in the past, North Korea and South Korea had a project called the Kaesong Industrial Complex located just north of the DMZ. It was South Korean managers, South Korean capital, and North Korean workers, uh, as many as 50,000 North Korean workers in uh, basically South Korean-run factories producing watches and kitchen supplies, textiles, clothing. Um, and this was a way for South Korean businesses to produce uh, manufactured goods at a cost less than if it was, were produced in South Korea. Um, so there is that kind of um, perspective model uh, for kind of slow motion reunification in which South Korea and North Korea both bring to the table what they can, um, capital from the South Korean side, relatively low priced labor on the North Korean side, and, um, and you know, become more effective economic competitor in the region and globally. Now, I should hasten to add that uh, North Korea doesn't just bring cheaper labor to the table. It also has uh, some natural resources that are valuable. And it also has uh, a couple of strategic sectors, which are, uh, which it could be globally competitive in, uh, like the IT sector, um, or for even, even more specific, uh, animation. North Korean animators were uh, contributing animation to some of major films seen around the world because uh, the work had been subcontracted to, to North Korean animation mm. studios. So I don't want to make it seem as though North Korea is just uh, you know uh, blue collar workers at, uh, offered at a, at a bargain basement price. North Korea does bring something economically to the situation, uh, to the, the, the potential of, of reunification, and South Korea knows that. So, so those would be the two major <clears throat> motivations: avoiding war and uh, and together, kind of getting a bump up for Korea more generally in the global economy. Mm. You know, that just makes me think of of how. On the surface, it, it, obviously, we want to avoid nuclear war. That should just be a given. We need to. Have, we want to end these these tensions in the region. 
but the way you just laid that out, and, and I really thank you for doing so, but it, it just puts it all in, in some kind of context for me because it's like the North Korean, uh, whatever you want to, it's almost like an island, right? It, it's so isolated in so many ways. It, it feels, I think, that it's being left behind in the global economy, and it sees all the prosperity that its neighbors are experience, is experiencing while it's enormously impoverished for majority of the people there. And it, it's just not something that can be sustained for I imagine for too much longer. Um, so it just seems like a very pragmatic thing to move in the direction that they are moving in. Um, but it, it almost has a cynical tone to it. And not to say that you're cynical, but there's a cynical element to it where it's like, we're going to start bringing low wage workers into the global economy and into the Korean economy more broadly. Um, and maybe it'll progress to the point where of course the, 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 um, the, the, quality of life for North Koreans would be improved. And that is, of course, something we should all want, but at, maybe at the expense in many ways um, of, of them, maybe instead of working in a sort of top-down state-enforced authoritarian communist regime <laughs> that gets co-opted for something that's maybe not as obviously dirty and dis- dis- destruct, uh, dirty and, and, and vile on the surface as say that would be, but it's just being co-opted for something that, oh, now a new form of exploitation is going to come in for the, the North Koreans. And, 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 you know, I, I, I have these tendencies to, to question that narrative of whether or not being integrated into the neoliberal economy, a global economic system is in fact, uh, obviously better in certain ways. And I, and I understand that completely. But there seems to be a cynical nature to all uh, to all of this. Would that be accurate? Would you agree with that at all? Well, there, yes. There, I mean, there's definitely elements of truth in that. Um, the North Korean government is, uh, you could either call it cynical or you could call it pragmatic, depending on <laughs> your point of view. Yeah. Uh, it kind of assesses what it has to offer and pursues it, um, in some cases quite ruthlessly. But um, I... When, when the Kaesong Industrial Complex was, was going strong, there was a, a misconception that was promoted, especially here in the United States, that it was some form of slave labor going on in those uh, factories, um, that the exploitation was of a nature that uh, go, went beyond you know, simply low-wage wa- low wage working and approached the level of, for instance, uh, the slave labor that took place during World War II. Uh, in Germany by uh, conscripts or concentration camp um, uh, people, people in concentration camps. But in fact, that wasn't true. Um, the, you had to compare what was going on in Kaesong to what was going on in the rest of the country. Uh, the people who worked at Kaesong were getting better wages. They were working in uh, much better conditions, uh, that the conditions were monitored according to international standards by South Korean businesses. Um, They were better fed uh, because they had access to food that was available in the cafeteria. Uh, That food was then not only feeding the people who were working, but their families. And from what we understand, an even larger network of people as it was spread around the country. Um, So in other words, uh, given the situation for the workplace today, in North Korea, something like Kaesong, something that we would consider just maybe the low end of the neoliberal model, the the low wage labor, is actually an improvement. Uh, Mm -hmm. And it's a sorry thing to say, but that's how far North Korea had sunk in terms of its its economy. Mm -hmm.